Hello, I'm Jared Taylor with American Renaissance. James Watson is the most distinguished scientist living today. He shared the Nobel Prize with Francis Crick in 1962 for discovering the molecular structure of DNA. Other Nobel laureates have called this discovery the greatest single scientific achievement of the 20th century. James Watson ran Cold Spring Harbor for 35 years and built it into the top molecular genetics research laboratory in the world. He played a key role in the Human Genome Project, which has already started a revolution in medicine, biology, and psychology. And now, at age 90, James Watson is an object of hate and contempt. His downfall began in 2007, when he wrote a book called Avoid Boring People that contained the following sentence. There is no firm reason to anticipate that the intellectual capacities of peoples geographically separated in their evolution should prove to have evolved identically. That same year, he explained that sentence to a reporter. He said he was, and I quote, inherently gloomy about the prospect of Africa because all our social policies are based on the fact that their intelligence is the same as ours, whereas all the testing says, not really. In other words, different groups evolved separately, and there is probably a genetic basis for differences in average intelligence. This view is supported by an immense body of scholarship and is consistent with everything we see when we open our eyes and just look around. But we live in a world gone insane. We're supposed to at least pretend to believe egalitarian nonsense. And so the sky fell on James Watson. He immediately issued a servile apology. I cannot understand how I could have said what I am quoted as having said. He then went on to say there is no scientific basis for his views. But heretics are not allowed to recant. Cold Spring Harbor fired him as boss of the lab, and Henry Kelly, a former president of the Federation of American Scientists, said, it is a revolting way to end a remarkable career. But the apology did get Dr. Watson something. Cold Spring Harbor let him keep his honorary titles of Chancellor Emeritus, Professor Emeritus, and Honorary Trustee. Even so, Speaking engagements and award ceremonies vanished, and James Watson became a non-person. Well, last May, he briefly re-emerged. There was a meeting at Cold Spring Harbor where Eric Lander, a bigwig scientist at Harvard and MIT, offered a short toast to Dr. Watson's vital contributions to the Human Genome Project. And he was mercilessly attacked for saying something nice about a wicked man. Dr. Lander groveled as follows. His views are abhorrent, racist, sexist, anti-Semitic. I was wrong to toast. I apologize. And so James Watson sunk once again into obscurity. Until this month. PBS aired a documentary called Decoding Watson, in which he was asked if he still had the same views on race. The scientist got the better of the man. He said he takes no pleasure in the differences between blacks and whites and wishes there weren't any, but genes are part of it. Again, the sky fell. Dr. Watson's old lab went into a frenzy and issued the following statement from which I quote, Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory unequivocally rejects the unsubstantiated and reckless personal opinions of Dr. James D. Watson. His statements are reprehensible, unsupported by science. Let's stop right there. I have no fewer than 13 books in my personal library, rigorously scientific books that support Dr. Watson's statements. Besides these books, there are countless articles in scientific journals about the genetic basis for group differences in intelligence. 1,200 people work at Cold Spring Harbor. Is every one of them lost in a hermetically sealed cocoon of complete ignorance? Or are they just spineless cowards lying through their teeth because they're afraid of the ignorant fanatics who run this country?
But let's get back to their miserable statement. The laboratory condemns the misuse of science to justify prejudice. Right, the world's greatest living scientist misuses science. No, he says he wishes there were no racial differences, but the evidence suggests that there are. This is science triumphing over emotion. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. And here's more mush from Cold Spring Harbor. The statements James Watson made in the documentary are completely and utterly incompatible with our mission, values, and policies, and require the severing of any remaining vestiges of his involvement. And with that, Cold Spring Harbor stripped him of all his remaining honorary titles. Are they going to dust the lab for his fingerprints and rub them all out too? This is like the commies who used to doctor photographs of old Bolsheviks to erase the comrades they'd hauled out and shot. Today, the authorities don't shoot people who fail to toe the party line. They just drag them through the mud, destroy their reputations, fire them from their jobs, and feel immensely superior about it. Geneticist Joseph L. Graves, for example, is now saying, Racism suspends all rational judgment. It takes people who are otherwise brilliant and gets them down roads that are intellectually unsupportable. The website The Scientist says, The science jerks and bigots should be shunned, no matter if they have a Nobel Prize. Now every lefty ignoramus can think he is superior to one of the greatest intellects of our time. Well, last October, James Watson was in a car accident. His son says he has, quote, very minimal awareness of what's going on. He cannot speak for himself. So I'll speak for him. His treatment has been beyond appalling. Mark Twain once said, there are times when one would like to hang the whole human race and finish the farce. This is one of those times. I'm ashamed to be a member of the species that has put on such a spectacle of ignorance, vanity, cowardice, and spitefulness. The truth will emerge, no matter how hard the fanatics try to hush it up. James Watson is as much a pioneer and a bold thinker at the end of his career as he was at the beginning. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, I invite you to subscribe to our podcast channel. That's on YouTube at Amran Podcasts. Also, please visit our website at amran.com. That's A-M-R-E-N dot com.